not all customers, not all your clients are created equally. Not just in terms of your interactions with them, not in terms, in terms of the relationship that you have with them and what you've got to deliver, but fundamentally in the terms of financial. A very underused, very powerful metric I'm going to talk to you today about is something called customer lifetime value. In this broadcast, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why you need to bother with customer lifetime value, what it can do for you, and also how we go about calculating that with the use of three illustrations. My name is Mahmood, I am an accountant, I am an educator, and I'm author, very proud author, of the book, I Hate Numbers. Uh, my mission, my objective has been for the last 27 plus years is to help you and your business improve your financial awareness, help you with those battles that in between your ears in, and saving you time, tax and helping you make more profits in your business. What a wonderful group of objectives we've got there. Shall we crack on with the video? In this broadcast, in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about something called customer lifetime value. It aren't just pound notes to it, but fundamentally in our business, whether that's a private business, whether that's a social enterprise or an arts organisation, fundamentally we need to make sure we generate money to cover the costs of running our business, to have surplus, i.e. profits, so we can contribute and we can put that towards our sustainability, future prosperity, making sure that we reward ourselves, our team satisfactorily, and obviously making sure our business is still here in the future to carry on delivering our why. So financial returns are absolutely an integral part of any business. And without money, without profits being generated, you've got a hobby on your hands and you haven't got a sustainable business. Now let's dive in. This idea of customer lifetime value. Now this is a metric that is very widely used by marketeers. They tend to keep that number and metric to themselves, but we're gonna actually look at that in more detail and see how powerful it can be for us in terms of decision making understanding the customers that actually lose us money and there are will be some in your portfolio if you have got customers that lose you money your decision is not necessarily to drop but to actually think about what you can do to improve that relationship financially whether that is customer is actually adding to your strategic overall objective but if we don't have those figures we don't have those numbers lots of decisions we can't take forward now in this part one of part two i want to introduce the idea of the customer lifetime value how we go about calculating it we've got some numbers to actually illustrate an explanation b without those numbers coming into the fore in part two which is next week we're going to delve deeper and expand the calculation dive deeper in terms of how we can actually use that and see what other metrics in our toolkit we can tap into to help us with our evaluation decision making without further ado folks let's introduce the idea first of all of customer life time value and again before we go into the metric we're going to have a look at the overall what it represents and then we're going to discuss why it's such an important measure and also how we go about calculating it so the whole idea behind customer lifetime value is financially we can look at the impact of a customer of a client of an audience that we're developing and we need to understand what that financial impact is to us and again that is also to see whether we're actually losing money and what we can do with that information to actually improve the situation the decisions that we subsequently make whether we invest whether we maintain that group now we have to take into account three elements first of all and we're going to look at the customer in terms of the revenue in terms of the sales that they generate ultimately the value of the sale the turnover is a in my opinion a very weak metric in itself because what we're looking for ultimately is the profitability is the return is the surplus that we generate from that customer now we can do this at a granular level in my experience many people who may not have come across this metric is start simply and then get more sophisticated as time goes on assuming that we've got the data which is really critical to collect this information we look at the customer and we first of all identify what is it that that customer on average spends with our business? So what's the average value of that transaction? Do we know how many transactions will be entered into by that particular customer? And what we're ultimately trying to work out is annually what they're spending with us. And then how long do we keep that customer for on average? Typically it's measured in years or fractions. Now that first top line gives you the overall monetary value the lifetime value of that customer. Later on in this video, I'm gonna show you with some examples how that reflects itself and how we go about doing the calculation. Now, the next thing from that figure above, we take the value of the revenue, the turnover, the income that that client generates 
over the lifetime and then we translate that into the profitability that we generate from that customer one example was to use what's called a profit margin next week we're going to expand and look at more sophisticated ways we can calculate that measure but again if it's your first time of using this metric i would start simpler and get into habits of actually doing the calculation you can always refine and make it more sophisticated as time goes on now there are three scenarios three examples i'm going to use here obviously substitute these for your own business uh, and the first example is a cafe so we've got this idea of a retailing type environment and in this example an arts venue has got a cafe they've calculated that the average customer spend in their cafe is 10 pounds the typical customer for them visits twice a week and over a year that's 40 weeks worth of visiting and they've found out the average retention period for that customer is three years and they calculated the average gross margin they're making on the sale of refreshments cakes coffees teas is they're selling is 60 percent the second example to illustrate a high ticket item is a car dealership they sell a car every five years for 35,000. the retention for that customer is typically they have two buying cycles they stay with the company for 10 years and they make an average gross margin of 30 percent the last example is a service-based organization a company and runs a membership and this is the financial story planning company the average membership they charge is 15 pounds per month members typically subscribe for a period of three years and the average gross margin they make from each member is 90 percent next week's video we're going to go into a little bit more detail to look at alternative ways and to get a much more powerful insight on the profitability but this will do for our purposes now let's translate this into what that does that look like numerically now from the three sample businesses that we've chosen our cafe our dealership and our membership that's the top line is the average transactional value the average track and typically over a year i've estimated 80 transactions in the cafe for their average customer 0.2 for the dealership 12 annual tr monthly transactions for the membership ultimately the LTV the lifetime value just wants to give us the value of in terms of turnover what the value is over a lifetime so take into account those retention periods have a look at that and think and consider what do you think the lifetime value would be for each of those three types of business once we've identified the lifetime value we then take into account the gross margins we're earning and that gives us the final figure of a customer lifetime value and that's the figure that's going to be more formative because that gives us the profitability at one level now that's what they translate as so in in revenue terms we generate 2400 pounds from the cafe for an average customer over their lifetime 70,000 for the dealership and 540 pounds on the membership program taking into account the gross margins that we generate from each of those three different businesses that's the CLV that we've got at the bottom that's the calculation that's the first part and that helps us decide you know if they're not quite where we want them to be what can we do to actually increase the level of profitability are there things we can do in terms of increasing the retention period are there things as such that we can reduce the cost basis and we haven't taken other costs into account again which we're going to explore next week and that's the cost of servicing and the cost of actually the support costs behind the scene of looking after those customers it gives us ideas of opportunities to improve to make things more efficient and to ultimately know where our resources and efforts best lie so folks i hope you found that useful we've got the what the why and the how of customer lifetime value a very powerful metric hope you found it useful any comments folks please let me know and until next week have a go yourselves and to work out your customer lifetime values